Jinping Mei original version chapter 28 Chen Jingji was lucky enough to get the golden lotus, while Ziman King was confused and hit the iron rod. It is said that Ziman King helped the woman into the room, took off her upper and lower clothes, and she was naked. The woman was wearing a red goss tube top. The two of them sat side by side, sipping their glasses. Simon King put his arm around his pink neck and drank wine with him in an extremely gentle manner. He stared at the woman. Her hair was slanted. Her breasts were half exposed. Her delicate eyes were slanted. She was like a wine, drinking concubine, and her delicate hands could not help but touch his waist. The words were so frightening that the silver holder was still on it, making the soft jingle of Mao Dulu's body grow taller and longer. Simon King joked, you are still teasing him, because you have frightened him out of his head. The woman asked, What kind of wind disease? Simon King said, It's not a mad disease, but why is this limb paralysis turned to heat and unable to get up? Why don't you go down and talk to him and your son? The woman glanced at him with a smile, while squatting down, resting on one of his legs. He took a pair of trouser belt, tied the words, held them up with his hands, and said, You guy! The head in your head is open. The buttocks are open. If someone is in a coma, why don't you pretend to be dead by pretending to be dead? He lifted it up once, placed it on his pink face, and shook it for a long time. Then sucked it in his mouth, and used the tip of his tongue to pick at its mouth. Those words immediately made him furious. His cracked melon-headed eyes widened, and his beard straightened up. Simon King also sat on the pillow and asked the woman to crawl inside the gauze tent, sucking and slurping as much as she could to enjoy the beauty. Er's lustful thoughts became more intense, and he had sex with the woman again. The woman cried out, My daughter, you spared the slave, but you are also making fun of the slave. That night, the two of them indulged in sexual pleasure. There are words to prove it. The battle is full of joy. The clouds and rain have stopped and the beautiful eyes are slanted. The jade stem in hand is still hard, so I tell the talented man to make do with it. Drinking from the golden cup, the two of them are as drunk as they are infatuated. A night scene has been mentioned. The next day, Simon King went outside. The woman got up during the dinner date, changed into her sleeping shoes, and looked for the pair of red shoes she wore yesterday. One of them was missing. When I asked Chun Mai, Chun Mai said, Yesterday, my father and I helped my mother in, and Kyuju came with her mother's bedding. The woman called Kyuju to ask. Kyuju said, I didn't see my mother coming and wearing shoes yesterday. The woman said, You are talking nonsense. I came in without shoes. Could it be that I came in with my feet? Kyuju said, Mom, you are wearing shoes. Why are there no shoes in the house? The woman scolded, You are a thief slave, but you are still here. Pretend to be stupid. It's only in this room, so you can honestly look for it for me. Kyuju searched everywhere in the three rooms, on the bed and under the bed. Where could she ask for that shoe? The woman said, There is a ghost in my house, and it took my shoe. Even the shoes on my feet are gone. What do you want a slave like you to do in the house? Kyuju said, It's just a ghost. I was afraid that my mother would forget to leave it in the garden, so I never put it in. The woman said, Is it possible that Rinri has fainted? I don't know whether my shoes are on or not on my feet. She called Chan Mai, Follow this slave and look for her in the garden? Just find her. If he cannot be found, ask him to kneel on a rock in the courtyard. This spring plum really caught his attention. He searched everywhere in the garden and in front of the grape trellis. And there he could find it. Exactly, they were all taken away by Liu Ding. And the reed flowers, and the bright moon were hard to find. When the two came back from searching, Chan Mai scolded. Slave, your matchmaker has lost her way. There is nothing more to say, Mrs. Wang has sold the mill. She can't push it away anymore. Kyu Ju said, I don't know who stole my mother's shoe. I never saw my mother wear it inside the house. I bet you opened the garden door yesterday and left that shoe, but you picked up my mother's shoe. Chan Mai choked away the thick spit and cursed. You damn slave, you've troubled me again. Liu Nyang called the door, but I didn't open it for him. Did Kier let someone in? Why don't you hold me in your arms? You didn't care enough to look at my mother's bedding. And you still dare to talk about it. 
While escorting him to the house, the woman replied that she didn't have any shoes. The woman screamed and stepped out of his yard, kneeling on her knees. Kyuju burst into tears and said, When I search the garden again, if I can't find it, I'll beat my mother, Chun Mai said. Mom, don't believe him. The ground in the garden has been swept clean. Even the needles can be found. Where can you ask for shoes? Kyuju said, When I can't find them, I can teach my mother to beat them. Why are you poking your tongue? The woman said to Chun Mai, Fine, follow this slave and see where he goes. Chun Mai escorted him again, at the bottom of the garden hill and by the flower ponds. I searched under the pine wall, but couldn't find it. He also panicked and was scolded by Chun Mai, so he pulled him back to see the woman. Kyu Ju said, There is still that snow cave that I haven't found yet. Chun Mai said, That San Chun Wu is my father's greenhouse, and my mother has never been there. I don't think I can find her to talk to you. So she escorted him to the snow cave of Zhang Chun Wu. There is a sitting bed in the front, and there is nothing on the incense table next to it. Looking inside the bookcase again, Chun Mai said, This bookcase is full of his greeting papers. How did my mother's shoes get here? There is no such thing as a slipper. He was flipping through it in a disorderly manner, which made him angry. See, it's another scene. You're so crooked that you're going to die. After a while, Kyu Ju said, These are not my mother's shoes. In a paper bag, there were some incense sticks and straw. He took it out and looked at Chun Mai. Why do you have it? You just instigated me to beat it. Chun Mai saw that it was a big red flat shoe and said, It's your mother's. How did you get this book in the box? What a strange thing. Then he came to see the woman. The woman asked, Now that I have my shoes, where are they? Chun Mai said, In Zhang Chun Wu. I found them in the bookcase of my father's greenhouse and wrapped them together with some prayer paper, straw, and benzoin. The woman held it in her hand and compared it with the one she had taken from him. They were bright red for season flower satin, white silk flat embroidered shoes, with green tips and blue mouths with gold. Only the stitching on the shoes is different. One has gauze green stitching and the other has emerald blue stitching. You can't tell if you don't look carefully. The woman put it on her foot and tried it on, and found that this one was slightly tighter than the old shoe. Then she realized that it was the shoe of Lai Wang's daughter-in-law. I don't know when I met a thief and a strong man. So I didn't dare to take it into the house. So I hid it quietly, leave it there. I don't want my slaves to dig it out again. After looking at it once, he said, These shoes are not mine, slave. Kneel with me quickly. He told Chan Mai, put a stone against him. Kyuju started to cry and said, If it's not my mother's shoes, whose shoes are they? I'm going to find the shoes for my mother, but you're going to beat me. If you can't find them again, you don't know how you're going to beat me. The woman said he scolded. You thief slave, stop talking. Chun Mai hit him on the head with a big stone. The woman put on another pair of shoes and put them on her feet. She thought it was too hot in the room, so she told Chun Mai too. Put the dressing table on the flower bed and comb her hair without further ado. But Chen Jingji came in from the shop in the morning to look for clothes and walked to the front door of the garden corner. The little iron rod was holding on there. When he saw Chen Jingji holding a pair of silver mesh scarf rings in his hand, he asked, Uncle, what do you have? Just play with me. Jingji said, This is the nut towel circle that someone pawned come and redeem it. I will find it and give it to him. The little monkey said with a smile, Uncle, just play tricks with me. I will give you a good thing in exchange. Jing Ji said, Silly boy, this is someone else's. If you want it, I will find another one to play with you. If you have any good things, bring them to me. The monkey took out a red embroidered shoe from his waist and showed it to Jing Ji. Jing Ji then asked, Where is it? The monkey said with a smile, Uncle, I've told you. Yesterday I was playing in the garden and saw my father hanging my fifth wife by her legs on the grape rack. It was swaying underneath. My father went in behind me, and I asked Miss Chun Mai for some fruit. So I picked up this shoe under the grape trellis. Jingji took it in his hand. It was the crescent moon in the sky, red as a lotus flower with petals, and it was just three inches wide in the palm of his hand. He knew it was the thing on golden lotus's feet. So he said, You give it to me. I'll find another pair of good hoops to play with you tomorrow. 
The monkey said, Uncle, please stop coaxing me. I will ask you for it tomorrow. Jingji said, I won't coax you. The monkey started laughing and playing. Jingji took off the shoes in his sleeves and thought to himself, I played with him several times. And his mouth was still alive. But when he got to the middle, he rolled away again. Unexpectedly, this shoe fell into my hands. I really teased him today. And I'm not afraid that he won't pay the bills. Exactly, people didn't need to thread needles at that time. So they had to work hard to bring skill. Chen Jingji walked straight to Pan Jinlian's room with his shoes on his sleeves. Turning round the screen wall, she saw Kyu Ju kneeling in the courtyard and said jokingly, Little eldest sister, why are you here? You have joined the new army and are breaking stones again. Jin Lian heard it from upstairs and called Chun Mai and asked, Who said he picked up the stone? Isn't the servant holding the stone? Chun Mai said, It's my uncle here. Kyu Ju is holding the stone. The woman then called, Brother in law Chen, there is no one upstairs. Come up. This young man took off his clothes and came upstairs. I saw the woman upstairs, with two windows open in front and Xiang curtains hanging there, where she was dressing up in front of the mirror. Chen Jingji walked to a small table next to him and sat down. He saw a woman with oily black hair, she was holding a comb in her hand and mopping it on the floor. There was a nest of silk tied up with a red silk robe, and she was wearing a silver silk tassel. There is a trace of fragrance clouds in the bun, and there are many rose petals in the bun. The four buns are exposed, and the dress is the living guanyin. After a while, the woman combed her hair, crossed the dressing table, washed her hands in the noodle dish, put on her clothes, and called Chun Mai to bring tea to her brother-in-law. Jingji just smiled and said nothing. The woman asked, brother-in-law, what are you laughing at? Jingji said, I'm laughing at you for caring about what is missing. The woman said, the thief has a short life. What does it matter to you if I disappear? How do you know? Jingji said, look, I had a good intention and made a donkey's liver and lungs, but you were talking about me. You said, I went. He pulled away and walked downstairs. The woman grabbed her by the hand and said, it's strange that life is short. It can cause tension. Lai Wang's daughter-in-law is dead. I have no thoughts. But how can I still recognize my mother? Because he asked. What do you think I'm missing? Jingji took it out from his sleeve. Held up the shoe and pulled the target. And said with a smile. Who do you think this belongs to? The woman said. It's so short-lived. It turns out you stole my shoe. Teach me how to hit it. Take the girl and search round the ground. Jingji asked, How did you get into my hands? The woman said, Who else comes to my house? I dare you to be a thief and steal my shoe. Jingji said, You are not shy, old man. I haven't come to your house for the past two days. How could I steal it from you? The woman said, A good thief's life is short. Wait until I tell your father that you stole it from me, shoes, and said him not shy. Jingji said, You have no choice but to use dad to scare me. The woman said, You are so cowardly. You molested He Lai Wang's daughter-in-law even though he knew he had seven or eight wives. How could you be so afraid? If you didn't steal my shoes, why did they fall on you? In my hand come forward as soon as possible and return my shoes to me, and it will be cheaper for you. Since ancient times, when you see the owner, you will ask for it. But half a word, I will teach you to die in my hands. Jingji said, you old man is a woman, and you are very unruly. There is no one here. So let's say, you want shoes and a thing. And I will give them to you in exchange. Otherwise, even the thunder will not hit you. Go out. The woman said, what a short life. Should I give my shoes back to you in exchange for anything? Jingji said with a smile. Wen Yang, take the sweat scarf on your sleeve and give it to your son. My son will be given to you. Shoes. The woman said, I'll look for a good scarf tomorrow. Your father has seen this scarf all day long, and he doesn't want to give it to you. Jingji said, I don't. It doesn't matter if you give me a hundred square meters for anything else. All I want is your square sweat towel. The woman smiled and said, What a short-lived person who has been stuck for a long time. I don't have the energy to get involved with you too. So he took out a thin piece of white silk fringe from his sleeve. 
picked up a sweat scarf with ying ying and burn night fragrance, and even the word silver was plundered for him. There is poetry to prove it. The husband saw his concubine coming down the orchid steps to ask for her slender red embroidered shoes. No matter what is revealed, what is hidden is hidden in the sleeves. I can only say that this is a disgraceful thing. Chen Qingji quickly took it in his hand and sang deeply with him. The woman ordered, How Shang hides it? Sister Xu Jiao sees it. He is not a good talker, Jingji said. I know. While handing the shoes to him, he said something like this. It's a little iron rod I picked up in the garden yesterday. I asked me to change the net towel and play with it this morning. So and so, told once. After hearing this, the woman's face turned red and she said, Look at the little thief slave. He made my shoes so black. Look at me teaching his father whether to beat him or not. Jingji said, You want to kill me? It doesn't matter if you beat him. You can rely on me if you dare. I said so. Don't say anything. The woman said, I will spare the little slave, unless I spare the scorpion. The two of them were talking about being in a busy place when they suddenly heard a young boy coming to look for Anna. Dad is in the front hall asking my brother-in-law to write a gift note. The woman quickly encouraged him to go out. Come downstairs and teach Chumai to fetch a board to beat Kyuju. Kyuju refused to lie down and said, I'm looking for my mother's shoes. And she's going to beat me up. The woman handed Chen Jingji's shoes to him and cursed. You thief slave. You think those are my shoes. Where do you put this? When Kyuju saw it, she stared at it for a long time and said, but why did you come up with three shoes? The woman said, You are so bold, slave. Whose shoes are you taking? Are you trying to prevaricate me by saying I'm a three-legged toad? He couldn't help but pull Chun Mai down and beat her ten times. Kyuju hugged her buttocks and cried. She looked at Chun Mai and said, You opened the door, told people to come in, and took my mother's shoes. This time you taught me to beat me. Chun Mai scolded, You are packing my mother's bed and my mother's shoes are missing. My mother beat you so many times, and you still dare to complain. These are old shoes, if the hairpin on my mother's head is missing. You why don't you just rely on someone else? Mother Zekinger, I'll beat you less. If it were me, call a servant outside and give him 20 or 30 slaps. Let's see what happens to this slave. I cursed a few times, Kyuju swallowed her anger and was speechless. Let's say that Simon King called Jingji to the front hall, sealed the ruler's head gift, and sent congratulations to Kian Hu, who was newly promoted to the head of Huayan Tixing Station. I knew him personally and saw him off at Yangfu Temple, so there is no need to elaborate. Simon King sent Yuan to send him, and he accompanied Jingji to dinner in the hall and returned to the Golden Lotus Room. The Golden Lotus was totally incompatible with each other. He told the little iron stick about picking up the shoes and said, It's all your untalented thing. The little slave who taught thieves to kill 10,000 people picked up my shoes. He took it outside and no one saw it. I knew he was coming, if you don't give him a few slaps. He will get used to him by tomorrow. Simon King did not ask, Who sued you? I walked to the front impulsively, and beknownst to the little monkey, he was playing on the base of the stone platform when Simon King grabbed him by the top corner, punched and kicked him, and made him scream like a pig before he stopped. The little monkey lay on the ground and died for half a day. Lei Zhao and his wife were so panicked that they came to rescue him, and he woke up half a day later. Seeing the boy's nose and mouth bleeding, he took him to the room and asked him slowly, only then did he realize that something about picking up shoes had caused trouble. The young man angrily walked to the back of the kitchen, pointed in the east, and cursed in the west, and cursed. A thief will never die, you bastard. What grudge does my child have against you? He is only 11 years old. Two years old. What do you know about Xiao? You know that Mao Bai is also there? You just instigated him to beat him up, and his nose and mouth bleated. If he died, the whore and the bastard would be no good. I can't call you what are you wishing for. I scolded him in the kitchen. And then scolded him again at the front. I might as well scold him for a day or two. Because Jinlian was having wine with Simon King in the room. She didn't know yet. When Simon King went to bed to rest for the night, he saw that the woman was wearing the green silk. 
sleeping shoes with bright red tips. So he said, oh, how do you wear these shoes on your feet? They look weird and don't look good. The woman said, I only have one pair of red sleeping shoes, but my little slave got one oily. Where can I get a second pair? Simon King said, my son, you can make a pair tomorrow and wear them on your feet. You don't know, I, Dada, am happy to wear red shoes and look at them with love in my heart. The woman said, it's my fault. I came here to think of something. I wanted to say it, but then I forgot it. Yin Ling Shan Mai, take that shoe and show it to him. Whose shoes do you think these shoes belong to? Simon King said, I don't know whose shoes they belong to. The woman said, look, he's still playing with a chicken. You didn't hide it from me, yellow cat and black tail. You did a great job. Lai Wang's daughter-in-law has a smelly hoof, which is just like a pearl on a treasure. It's stored in the Tibetan house. In the greeting card box in the snow cave of Chunwu, some calligraphy papers and incense were mixed and placed together. No rare object should be made domestic. No wonder the thief Fan Hor died and fell into a beachy hell. He pointed again. Q Ju scolded. This slave used it as my shoe, then turned it out and taught me to beat it a few times. She told Chan Mai come out with me as soon as possible. Chan Mai threw the shoes on the ground, looked at Q Ju and said, I'll give you a reward and wear them. Q Ju picked it up in her hand and said, Mother, these shoes, all I have to do is hold my toes. The woman scolded, You thief slave, why are you teaching Mao by your mother? She was your master's mother in the previous life. Otherwise, why would he have collected his shoes so delicately? They will be passed down to future generations. You are shameless, goods. Q Ju took the shoes and walked out. But the woman called her back and ordered, Get the knife. Wait until I chop the whore into several pieces and take her to the toilet. Behind the Yinchen Mountain, the thief and whore will live forever. You must not be reincarnated, Yin said to Simon King. The more distressed you look, the more I prefer to chop it into pieces for you to see. Simon King smiled and said, It's weird, slave. Just put your hand away. I have such a heart, the woman said. You don't have such a heart, so you made a vow. The adulterer died and I don't know where to go, but you still keep it. What do you do with his shoes? Sooner or later, be careful and think about him. Just because every time I have sex with you, you have no intention of doing it. And you still want me to work with you, Simon King said with a smile. That's all. It's strange that the little whore has such things. Even when he was here, he never performed any bad etiquette in front of you. So he hugged Fenxiang and kissed her on the lips, and the two of them made love. Exactly, the moving spring beauty is delicate and charming, and the butterfly's heart is soft and strong. There is poetry to prove it. To whom are you speaking your heart out? Where would you like to send your thoughts? It's hard to stop thinking all you want, and it's always 12 o'clock in the day. All right, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.